I'm Caleb Harris. Thank you for joining me. Today is another exciting part in my machine substitution series. Today I'm going to be talking about the thickness planer and other ways you can accomplish the tasks you'd normally use one for. This is my power planer. Now if you're watching this I'm going to assume you don't have one so you may not really understand how they work and what they do. So I'm going to talk about that first. Now if you already do here's a time code for all the substitutions that I'm going to be talking about so you can skip ahead to them if you want to. Personally, I think the jointer and the planer are kind of brothers. They work in a very similar fashion. So if you're familiar with the jointer, this isn't too different, or if you've seen my jointer substitution video. The planer has a bed or table, and above that, behind this dust collection guard, is a rotary cutter head that rotates towards the infeed side. This is actually the outfeed side. The infeed side is over here. You pass your board through the planer, the rotary cutter head, cuts the top of the board, your good side should be referenced off the bed, and then the rotary cutter head will make the top identical to whatever the side is that goes on the reference planer, the reference bed. Now, these are also called thickness planers because really their main job is to bring a board down to final thickness. When you take a board to the planer, it should already have one good face that you established at the jointer. Now, if you don't have a jointer, you would do that at the planer. But if you don't have a planer, I'm gonna bet you probably don't have a jointer, but when we get into our substitutions later, all the substitutions I give you will actually work to establish your first face and your second face, so no worries there. And that's pretty much it. The thickness planer really is sort of a one trick pony that has a second trick, which is pretending to be a jointer. All it does is take a board that has one good side and makes the other side perfectly parallel to the first side and flat. The first substitution I'll talk about is the sled that I built. And I made this to work with either a router or a circular saw. And I did a whole build video on it that I'll put a card up to. It talks about how I made it and how it works. And you've probably seen sleds like this before used to flatten slabs like the one I have here. But there's no reason that you can't use it to also flatten regular rough dimensional lumber. It works exactly the same way. In fact, it'd work a little bit faster because you're not having to surface near as much material. Basically, all you would do is get it inside of the sled, shim it down, and use some hot glue or something to make sure it doesn't wobble around because you don't want it moving while you're cutting on it. And then you get your circular saw or your router inside the sled, and you pass it back and forth until you get one decent face. Once you have that face, you can pop it loose. You should be working on a good flat surface so you won't have to shim it again. You just put that good face down, and do the opposite side, and now you have both sides planed, essentially, and they should be parallel to each other with an even thickness. Now you are gonna have a slightly rough cut. This is not a finished cut, so you'll definitely wanna come back with a sander on a fairly rough grit to smooth everything out before you move on to your finished sanding. The second option I like to talk about is the way this has been done for centuries, and that's with hand planes. Now, the optimal setup for milling lumber with hand planes would be to start with a smooth, uh, scrub plane, then move on to your jointer plane, then finish off with the smoothing plane. But if you don't have those three and that's not an investment you can make yet, you can do the whole job with a jack plane. It'll just take you a little bit longer. Now a jack plane is normally sized around a number five or a number six. And if you're gonna do any milling, I wouldn't recommend trying to do that with anything smaller than one of those planes. Because the higher the number of the plane, what you're talking about, this jointer plane is a number seven, means the longer sole, which gives you a much greater reference surface. Now, a smoother is around a number four. So if you try to flatten a board with something like this, you're gonna have a really hard time because the sole is so short, it doesn't have enough reference surface on the board, so it's really easy to end up making a wavy board. But once you get up to a jack plane, you normally have about enough reference on the bottom of your plane that you can ride all the peaks and valleys on the board and come out with some pretty flat lumber. And of course, using this technique, you can get all four sides of the board finished. Now this isn't my forte, and people who are much better than me working with hand tools have already done videos on this. So below, I'll link a couple from a few guys that are really good at working with hand tools that you can check out if this is a technique you're interested in. The last technique I wanna talk about works the same with two different tools, a belt sander or a hand power planer. I don't have a hand power planer, but just know that how you'd attach this with a belt sander would be the same way, but a power planer would be a whole lot less dusty. Now, what you're trying to accomplish with either of those tools is pretty much the same way you would attack this board with hand planes. So 
I'm going to go over some highlights, but I'd recommend watching one of the videos on how to mill lumber with hand planes to help you understand what you're trying to accomplish with, you know, your power planer or your belt sander. You'll want a square or something else with a super flat edge, so that way you can check and make sure that you're flat across in short areas. You'll want some type of long straight edge. If you don't have a good one, then even just a rule or a long level will be about flat enough for you to get a good idea to make sure you've taken out any bow in the board. And winding sticks. Now these aren't winding sticks, they're just some blocks I have, but I'll leave a video with how to make winding sticks. And the idea behind winding sticks is they're just two surfaces that you can put that are a little longer than your board to give you a good siding surface. And what you're looking for here is this makes it really easy to see if you have any twist in your board. And then if you have any twist you, that you identify, you can take off the high spots until you get a flat board. And just looking at your board, you'll probably have a good feel for where the high spots are and where to start. But I'd really recommend starting with some type of straight edge and just kind of checking it out. You know, anywhere it rocks is going to be a high spot. Marking all your high spots and attacking them and taking your time. Because the last thing you'd want to do is inadvertently remove too much material and dish it out somewhere because now you have to bring the rest of the board down to that level. So you want to work to the lowest level that already exists in the board. You don't want to create an even lower level and make that much more work for yourself. Especially if you're working with a belt sander, which is going to be dusty, slow, messy work as it goes. And if you are with a, messing with a belt sander, I recommend getting one of the ceramic belts. They last a lot longer than the regular aluminum oxide. And go with a super low grit, like a 36 or a 40. Even an 80 when you're starting with rough lumber is going to take you a lot of work. There is another machine option for substituting a planer, but if you don't have a planer, you probably don't have one of these, but maybe a friend does. And that would be a wide belt sander or a drum sander. They work basically the same way as a planer does, but instead of a rotary cutter head, they have sandpaper. So they accomplish exactly the same task, exactly the same way. They're normally meant to be used after you plan a board just to get you down to a finished sanded smooth surface that's ready for finish. But there's no reason you can't slap heavy grit sandpaper on there and use it exactly the same way you would as a planer. And if you don't have a jointer, you can also create a jointing sled for a drum sander or belt sander, same way as you would a regular thickness planer. And I'll leave a link below to a video my buddy Mad Raven Woodworks did on making a planer sled or jointing sled that you could also use in any type of wide form sander. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and useful. This is actually my third video in a series I'm doing on machine substitutions, which is all about just what this video was, how to do woodworking if you don't have certain machines in your shop that you often see in my videos and probably other content creators videos. I've already done a video on the table saw and one on the jointer. I plan on doing another one on the miter saw, the drill press and the band saw. If there's any other machines you can think of, then feel free to leave me a comment and let me know. And also, if you've ever had to work without a planer or you've come up with any tricks that I didn't talk about, please let me know in the comments. I, I'd love to have them shared with the rest of the audience and also know myself because sometimes a planer just doesn't work or I might be somewhere without one. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you hit that like button and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about it. If you really enjoyed this, please consider supporting the channel to help me create more content like this. There's several ways you can do that. You can support me on Patreon and receive things like free plans and merchandise. I'll have a link below for that. You can also purchase merchandise and plans from me from my website. Or you can just do simple things like hit that share button and let your friends know about this video. That actually helps a lot. Or before you hop on Amazon next time, hit any of my Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. Thank you.